your program has helped us get a high quality program that is worth the money because I've made money back two, three times more of that through the year, last couple of years that way. Just we had a large return on the investment we did in your program. I wish we would have done it years ago, I guess is the best way to put it. All right, Bill and Jen, thank you guys for joining me today. So for the person watching this video and just hearing about you guys for the first time, if you could just start off, share your names, a bit about your operation and uh, where you guys are located and what you guys have going on. We're, we're, I'm Bill Bergen and this is my wife, Jennifer. We're in Montana, central Montana. Um, we run a cow-calf operation and a feedlot, backgrounding yard. We also... Uh, do haying and custom feeding and custom farming, whatever we can to make stuff work. Um, and we have three boys and hopefully all three boys will be coming back. Yeah. And then what generation are you guys? Be the fourth generation and the boys will be the fifth generation. Okay, great. Awesome. All right, Jen, this question is for you. So prior to coming into Legacy Farmer, um, what were some of the biggest things in the operation not working from finances to operations to just whatever? Um, probably some of the biggest things that were not working was the um, encompassing structure of Bill having to be in charge of everything. He couldn't, um, to make everything work, he had to be the one that had the extra responsibility of it. So he had a lot of extra stress and time on his shoulders. Um, and then it also made it stressful for um, not just him, but for those of us that were trying to, to help him with it, because trying to make sure that all of us could do our part to make it easier for him, a lot of times it was overlapping. Um, also working um, with the bank to make sure that we were doing the best we could do to make sure we were getting the best interest rates as well as um, financing for the operation and making sure that we were interacting with the bank in our best manner. Um, yeah. Do you, do you feel like the stress and stuff that you guys were feeling at that time was from, you know, things, you know, basically building a centralized operation where everything had to go through bill and, and the thing was literally built around him. Or do you think um, finances and, and, and things like that were included there as well with the size of your operation, the size of the team that you guys have, like, where do you think that stress was rooted in? All of the above. Okay. Um, it was definitely a lot where the, whole operation had to be centered around him and it wasn't a bad thing but it just took where all the accountability was on his shoulders and that that's more stress than anyone needs to have um the the operation is not a a small family farm anymore um with the amount of employees we have and and the amount of jobs that we do one person can't do it all one person can oversee it as a ceo but you can't do all the jobs yeah um and with one person trying to do that, you also couldn't, he just had too many hats and it wasn't fair to him. Yeah. So do you feel like that stress then was bleeding over just into basically every area of life as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Bill, Bill in what ways though? Do you, do you remember and, and see it? Cause I, I remember our first call, right. And I remember um, discussions and things that we had and, and some of the tough conversations you had to go through, but how do you think that stress was, was impacting you across the board? Well, it just affects me, my health and also just my mood and my well being. So yeah, just a different way of viewing things and doing stuff differently to make your life a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. How tough was that for you? Um, again, after our first call, I know you guys had some, some tough conversations there, but how tough was it for you to really open up and be willing to, to make some changes and stuff? Cause I know you've been accustomed to doing things a certain way for decades now. That wasn't hard. That okay. was actually fairly easy. I was glad to get rid of it. <laughs> good deal. Good it deal. was good for him to get rid of it, but and other people to step up. I think there was a trust aspect though, is that it was okay to assign the jobs, but being able to trust the people to do their jobs at first was scary. I mean, it was scary for him to trust me to do some jobs. It was scary for both of us to trust other people to do the jobs. But with your help and having all of the, the different conversations we've had, both of us have been able to step back and see, let other people do their jobs and see that when you let other people do the jobs that you know they can do, you're not, uh, it's nothing against you if you're not doing all the work. Yeah. I guess is the best way to describe it. I mean, and you've said what a lot of people have said in our group. There, there's a lot of guilt, right? That comes with passing on these things when you feel like one, you've been accustomed to doing it for a number of years, but two, you just feel like it's a job that you should be doing as the owner and, and that it's your responsibility, especially with the amount of risk and, and, you know, dollars at play for the size of your guys' operation. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I think that is honestly the hardest part is, is 
getting over the, especially with it being generational. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of a, there's a lot of that guilt factor is because his mom and dad did so much as just his mom and dad. Yep. And I know we have to consider how much we've expanded and, and changed. And obviously it's the same way with having the boys go to college with, for them to come back and help run it. They have to have certain, um, there's certain expectations they have to have, yeah. which were not required when Bill came back. He did them anyway, but they weren't the requirements that we've put in place for the boys. But just the generational changes, you can't expect. And that's something I think we had to, to work through is that you can't expect the same that the changes don't occur from the generation. You can't hold yourself to the same standards or expect the same things from the generation before you that you're going to do. And we also can't hold what our kids are going to do to what our expectations were because they are going to make changes and we have to be prepared for that. And I, I think that was probably one of our biggest things is, at least for me, is wanting to make sure that and why this program has been so beneficial is making sure that we're laying the foundation so that the boys can take what we've started and have the foundation to expand it if they want to or to um, make growth in certain areas. We, we want to take all of the steps that we've already done so that they don't have to redo them. Yeah, for sure. The mistakes, right? Making all, yes. all the mistakes and stuff like that. So what do you feel like the foundation of the business was before you came into um, Legacy Farmer, if you had to describe it? The foundation, uh, we were a decent business. And, um, some some spots we weren't organized as well. And, I mean, some of the business planning helped a lot um, by offsetting uh, some of my responsibilities. I can work more on the business than in the business, so, yeah. which helps some. <laughs> I think the foundation before too, though, was very much um, small well, we <laughs> that and also very small family farm. Um, yeah. The, the overview of it was a small family farm. And even though we had gotten bigger, a lot more employees, a whole bunch of different, we'd bought more land and done more projects with it. We still had the, the viewpoint of it being the small family little farm. family farm. Yep. So I, I don't think that, I think that, Legacy Farmer helped us set up so that the foundation of, of the family farm is still there, but brought it into the business aspect of, of really what it is, is it's still a generational family farm, but through the business aspect of an of a ranching operation. Yeah, for sure. And I think what you're saying, right, is that as the business evolved and grew, the way you guys managed it didn't evolve and grow with it. Right. We were still managing it like it was a small family farm operation when the reality is the size of it that it's at today. It just requires a different level of management and accountability and structure and organization like the, the thing just has to change. And I think that's also what you're saying, too, Jen, is making sure it's set up for the boys to evolve and and grow it further when they officially take over as well and make sure they have the right tools and resources that will support and, and expand with them as well. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. From a financial standpoint, what was not working, um, you know, prior to you guys coming into Legacy Farmer? Some of our loans weren't in the right spots. I mean, yeah. we hadn't taken, we'd taken some of the um, longer term loans onto our operating loan and we needed yep. to reach some of that. And once we did that, it seemed to uh, help out a lot. So. Yeah, for sure. Jen, anything else to add there on what you saw from your point of view on what was not working financially as far as structure and organization? I think it was just um, having not had the egg business background, um, seeing the, the direct change of the ratios just mm -hmm. because of how you knew stuff was there and it didn't look right. But as soon as we were able to shift stuff to their, their proper places, it showed more of what I expected to see from the ranch and, and knowing how we were doing. Yeah. Do you guys feel like our program and specifically Farmer Metrics helped you get it just structured and organized to, to make it simpler for you guys, right? To, to be able to see the numbers very clearly, know what was going on, but also too, just being able to ex export those reports and get them straight over to your banker as well. Your software is very good. It helps. Um, the bank really likes it. And it's easy to, if you stay on top of your updates and you're able to update it each month, it's not hard to do. It's just a matter of doing it. And it takes you know, in our case, probably takes two, three hours on my time once a month. As long as our uh, QuickBooks side of things all caught up, you just print a report and then export it into, yep. don't export it, but you have to manually enter it in the right yep. places in your, your spreadsheet. But that gives us very good idea where we're at in our business. 
Yeah. Things aren't so bad. Yeah. I mean, it's like you guys had that prior. No, we were once, maybe twice a year, we were up there. Okay. Well. And then, I mean, we were once a year at the January 1st. Every year, our books yeah. were 100, percent and then if we needed more money somewhere along the time during the year, we'd have to get them up to date for the bank in order to do them. I hated if, the month of December. <laughs> if uh, they asked us for up to date books right now, I just print them off and give it to them. So, yeah. and and I think that's probably one of the, the we, best parts. Of we it. are exporting that once a month to yep. them. So, yep. It's it makes it easier for us because we just send it to the bank and then they update it. We don't it's not even a request from them. Um, the bank, because of, of what we're doing with the program, with having the farmer metrics and everything, they don't even it, it's not even where they seem to they don't have concerns on us. Um, there is no like there's no concerns. There's no stipulations or anything because they know at any time they can call us and within an hour we can tell them, Hey, this is where we're at. Or, you know, beginning of August, they knew where we were at the beginning of July. So yeah, it's, uh, we always had a good relationship with the bank, but it's not just a, it's not just a good relationship. Now it's a, a current working relationship with them. And trust is amplified. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And there's no longer the, the, the dreaded stress of end of the year, I, have to get everything entered, everything classified, everything put where it needs to go. And it's just, it's, it's, it's made the operation run like the business it is. Yeah. So Jen, what type of weight off of your shoulders is that then by having that, that level of structure and organization and just, you know, timeliness and being able to get things updated pretty quick? A lot. Um, the basement's no longer a dungeon. The office is no longer a dungeon. <laughs> okay. We used to joke about having to go to the dungeon. It's, it's no longer that it's just, it's where you go and do the paperwork and it's, you know, you do the billing, you do that. We can, it's no longer a guilt factor if Bill's down there working. I don't yeah. feel like I'm not doing my job because he's able to do it too. When it no longer turns, it's no longer this dreaded thing that you're like, man, I don't want to go do it because when you do update it one time per year, Bill, you're going to spend what, a, a multiple days, if not a week yeah. down there. Yeah. Yeah, down yeah. there trying to update it versus just, you know, take takes work, you know, legwork, getting everything set up in the the initial parts. But then once it's all in there, it's just maintenance once a month. Yeah. yeah well, and the boys can look at it. Yeah. Um, they will, though. Yeah, can. actually, yeah. they're going to look at it this weekend because one of them has it for one of his classes. And that's that's the other thing is that they they can have conversations with us and they know exactly where we're at because they can have those conversations because we know exactly where we're at. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, great. Well, so last question for you then. Um, if you guys were in a position where, you know, somebody is sitting on the fence and I asked you guys to talk to him, I want you to pretend you're talking to your prior selves before you came into Legacy Farmer, dealing with all the issues that you're dealing with operationally, financially, the stress, the anxiety, the guilt, all that stuff that you were dealing with. And this person was sitting on the fence and they're asking Bill and Jen, like, I, I don't know if this is the right fit for us or not. This is the size of operation we have. This is everything we have going on. These are the problems that we're facing. What would you honestly say to that person? Uh, your program has uh, helped us. You're, you've got a high quality program that uh, is worth the money because I've made money back two, three times more of that through the year, last couple of years that way. But uh, we've been able to capitalize. Just we had a large return on the investment we did in your program. And it's helped immensely on just strategies and you're working on the business itself and your own person yourself as well yep. to do better and it's just good good to have it's a good good fit for us the stress that i wish we would have done it years ago um i guess is the best way to put it, it it's one of those where you you see the ad for a while um and you you see the ad and you're like yeah this could be interesting maybe and then you just don't and then when we finally did I wish we would have done it a lot sooner just because just the the stress level alone that it's reduced um, the quality of family time we've gotten to have more, um, you know, I'm and also the the accomplishments that it's given to the guys that work underneath us. It's made them have more feel like they have more value, mm -hmm. which allows them to take more ownership in their value. And when people underneath you have more ownership in what they're doing, they they work harder and they value their time better. And so, I mean, 
the guys already worked, they already worked hard, but when they feel like they have a stake in it, they take ownership and, and they want to be as successful as, as they can. Yeah. And it helps build it helps build their esteem and it helps build their, I guess in some ways it helps build the quality of life that they've got as yeah, well. For sure. For sure. And Everybody it makes, knows. yeah. I mean, it makes our kids excited to come back. Yeah. That's the whole plan, right? Is, yep. is thinking about where the operation was before. If the boys came back at that level, I mean, they would, they'd be inheriting, right? A lot of stress and, and just struggle and disorganization on certain things there versus now I want you guys to be able to confidently say that, hey, we got the critical pieces put in place for you kids to come back, take it over, not experience the stress, not experience the mistakes or the problems and stuff that we went through. But now we can, it's ready for you guys to, to continue on and expand into the future for your families. Yeah. The mistake, the stresses and the mistakes they'll have are ones that are going to be their own doing, yeah, not something sure. that we've left for them. Um, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. Bill, Bill gets to check it off and say, Hey, you guys, you guys screwed this up. Not me. I gave you everything <laughs> <laughs> business. <laughs> place, essentially you you screwed this one up. <laughs> so, okay, perfect guys. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, have the conversation with me. Thanks.